in here. Julia? I mean, I'm here. Yeah. I was just like down there. Yeah, it's a nice background there with a fire oh, yeah. going. Is that a real fire? It's a real fire. It's not a Zoom background. And yeah. it's, I'm not making stew before anyone asks. <laughs> it's a humidifier. It's right? a humidifier. Well, welcome everybody to chilly Vermont. It's uh, back to winter here now for us. We had a little snow and a high of 20 today. So it's, uh, we're getting kind of cozy. Yep. Julie is back. I, I know that everybody is happy. And Phil is here. Phil is, Phil is in, lurking in the background. Tom's back, too. It's really good to be Tom's, back. Tom's back. Don't ask me if it's good to be back. <laughs> it's good to have you back. <laughs> well, it, it's, um, I, I always look forward to these, so it, it is good. Me, too. I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm excited to see everyone in the comments. Yeah, yeah, people are starting to Cole says, Hey guys, it's almost time. Well, here we are, Cole. <laughs> hey Cole, it is time. Yeah, it's time. We're prompt. Um <laughs> next Monday we may start at 3 30 because I have to pick up my son at school at about quarter of three. So we may we may start. It's gonna be a tie-off, right, Julia? Yeah, that's right. And we're going to tie the uh, the uh, Dells Merkin permit fly, permit bonefish, redfish fly, striped bass fly. Uh, Tim Tim doesn't know it yet because I haven't told him, but I decided last <laughs> night because it's my pick. So we're going to tie the we're going to tie the Merkin, which has some has some. Um, you know, even if you don't tie a lot of saltwater flies, it has some interesting techniques that I think people can apply to other stuff. So anyway. Today, we are going to tie a balanced leech. Let me show you what one looks like. I'll see you a little bit. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Julia. So that's a balanced leech. And um, it's, a, it's a fairly simple fly. There's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a technique to, to make this fly balanced. And the, the whole idea behind this fly is that when you tie it, uh, with a on with a loop knot, it hangs horizontally. Normally, weighted flies uh, will will bob and weave up and down, and that sometimes attracts fish. Clouser minnow, uh, beadhead woolly bugger, things like that. They bob and weave, and and fish take them. Uh, but uh, it looks a lot more realistic. And so sometimes, uh, you know, leeches swim horizontally. Bait fish swim horizontally. And uh, sometimes it's nice to have a fly that will ride horizontally. Now, to the best of my knowledge, this was originated by Stillwater anglers. And um, the person who first showed it to me, I don't know if he developed it, but he's certainly the person that's popularized it, is Phil Rowley uh, from Canada. Phil is uh, author of the uh, Orvis Guide to Stillwater Fly Fishing. Um, I just saw a review. I just noticed I had some chocolate on my lip. I gotta get rid of that. Um, <laughs> I uh, I just noticed a review in California Fly Fisher that said that this book is the best, uh, the best, most updated uh, still water fly fishing book around. And um, uh, I I love Phil. He's a he's a wonderful human being and a great angler, and is really my my uh, mentor in still water angling. And the way they the way they fish this balanced leech is they uh, tie it under an indicator and to whatever depth they think is just off the bottom and they just throw it out there and let it sit and the waves the movement of the waves will make that will make that fly move and you can occasionally twitch the indicator to make the fly move but it but it hangs horizontally so it's uh, it's more natural when it's hanging in the water. And this is a really, real killer pattern for fishing in lakes. And this would be for trout, for, for bass, for panfish, um, fishing a lot of leeches. And uh, I tried this technique. I haven't fished it much, but I tried this technique uh, recently in, in a river. Uh, I tied a balanced leech with a loop knot, with a non-slip mono loop um, under an indicator in, in a river in a fairly slow pool and just threw it upstream and kind of let it drift down. And um, 
and worked uh, worked fairly well to the surprise of a couple guides I was with. They didn't think it would work. So you can use this uh, in a lake or a stream. It's a only has a couple materials plus a pin and a bead, so it's easy to tie, and they're kind of fun. And uh, this one is all black, kind of black and a little purple bluish purple in it, but you can tie these in any colors you want. I would, um, I would try all black. I would try all white and, uh, all, all yellow or tan might also be a good color. And then uh, maybe olive, but you know, leeches are kind of dark blackish brown. So brown would be a good color too. But anyway, so you can tie them in any color you want. It's mainly a, a style and, um, yeah, so shall we uh shall we start what do you think should we start tying this baby any questions before i start people just kind of curious how your trip went to, to patagonia and oh. it looks like we have erica's mom in the comment section erica's mom yeah. <laughs> welcome erica's mom um <laughs> How did my trip? Yeah, the trip was great. Trip was great. We shot a lot of video. We shot forty. Uh, we shot forty video tips for the Learning Center and for uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram. Uh, short, basic tips, and you'll be starting to see those in a couple of weeks. And uh, throughout the year, we'll we'll be doling them out. So we uh, did a lot of video work. I went with a very talented cameraman, and um, fishing was good. Uh, certainly good compared to what I'm used to. Uh, it probably wasn't stellar for uh, Patagonia, um, but it was good. We caught we caught a bunch of fish, and um, we got all the fish we needed for the video. So I was happy, and it was a little warmer than Vermont. Not much. It was in the fifties and sixties, so it was nice weather. Um, if you've never been to Patagonia, the wind blows all the time, twenty four hours a day. So if you're planning a trip to Patagonia, whether it's Chile or Argentina, practice your casting in the wind because you're going to have wind all the time. You just get used to it. And it's, you know, it's not undoable, but it's, you know, if you're not used to fishing in the wind, it's tough. But it was great. It was a great trip. Uh, Magic Waters is a wonderful, wonderful lodge. I highly recommend it and um, had a good time. Okay. So we're going to start with a bead and a pin. So I'm just going to take any old pin, just a, you know, a pin from, from the store, a pin with a head on it, not a needle, but a pin. And, you know, you can use any, I've had these pins for like, I don't know, 20 years, just a plain old pin. And I'm going to take a bead of the size I want. I'm going to tie this on a size 12 jig hook. Um, I like these leeches fairly small. So I'm going to tie it on a size 12. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to slip my bead on the pin like so. And you, you want to, you want to uh, secure that bead first because you're going to have to slide it around to balance this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bead in my vise. Take the completed fly out. Put the pin in my vise like so, move this over. And I'm just gonna take, I'm using a, a 3.0 or 140 denier black thread to tie this fly. You can use any, any thread you want. You don't need a really fine thread for this fly. And I'm gonna just build up a little dam here in front of the bead. You could put a drop of super glue in front of it, but the problem is you're going to want to slide this bead. You're going to want to slide this bead on the uh, on the shank of the hook, so you don't want to have a chance of getting a, the super glue uh, on the shank of the hook. Okay, so now that bead isn't going to go anywhere. I just I just want to secure that bead there. And then we're going to whip finish that. Oh, need my whip finisher. I always forget something. And we're going to whip finish just a couple times. 
that's going to be all covered up and then take that out of the vise. And then we're going to put our jig hook in the vise. This is the Orvis uh, tactical jig hook, barbless, of course. And you're going to start your thread somewhere up toward the kink. Like so. And then you're going to attach. Actually, first thing you want to do is uh, cut this pin back because you're not going to need all that. You're going to need about half of it. I'm going to cut it. Yeah, cut it right about here. Just be careful. Close your eyes and do this over a trash can or something because that, that end of that pin is going to go flying through the air. So now I've got that cut off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just generally you want that bead to be about one bead length from the eye. So one more bead length. It looks like I got it like one bead length from Tom, the eye. Tom, do you eye. switch cameras? Oh, thank you. Now you can see it. So I've got it about one bead length from the eye. And I'm going to take maybe six turns or so. Actually, I'll come back a little more. But don't you don't want this to be tight yet. And once you want, what we're going to do is check the balance on this. Um, once we check the balance, then you're going to know what distance you need, and you won't have to check the balance every time. So I'm just going to take a couple. And I, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on there because I want to be able to slide that bead. And then you're going to put a piece of thread or tippet material through the eye of that. I can thread it and just just make a loop. You don't have to tie a loop and then let, let it out of the vise and see how it hangs. So that's hanging. That's hanging a little bit head down. A little bit, but it's pretty well balanced by the time I get by the time I get uh, stuff on there, it'll be you know pretty well balanced. So that's good, but I might push that bead back just a bit. So what I do then is I put the hook back in my vise and I'll just gently push on that pin a little bit to move it back. Now I've got, um, I've got a little bit of too much pin sticking out the back there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. So, uh, you know, you, you'll be able to slide this bead forward or backward at this point, uh, depending on how it balances. So now that you got it balanced, just remember where that bead is sitting. And then you can, uh, you know, you don't have to measure it every time. Once you tie one with the same size bead and hook. Now I can start my thread again. And now I can bear down on that pin, keep it on top of the hook. And I wonder if I can sneak in and cut that pin because it's just a little bit too long without cutting the hook. Yeah, there. Okay, so now, now I can put some pressure on there and wind that in. Be careful of the end of the pin. It may, it may uh, fray your thread as it did mine there a little bit. And if it makes you feel better, put a drop of super glue on there, but that, that is not going anywhere. That's going to stay there. I'm not going to worry about putting any glue on it. Okay, so now it's basically, that's the hard part. 
that's the di that's the part that makes it different. And now it's just going to be um, tying a leech on top of that. So I'm going to take a piece of woolly bugger marabou, black. And most people like the tails on their leeches, not terribly full. So you don't need a you don't need a big heavy uh, piece of marabou. You know, just something like that. And as usual, you probably want to wet it. it; makes it easier to deal with. And I like the I like the tail about the length of the body. So I'm gonna whoop, I'm gonna measure it here, maybe a little bit longer than the body. And I'm gonna tie it in right at the bend there. And I'll make a couple wraps forward. Then I'll cut the rest of that feather off. And, <clears throat> excuse me, go forward and bind down the marabou. You go back and forth a couple times to smooth it out if you want. But the, no, no bumps are going to show because you're going to make a pretty fuzzy body on this thing. Any questions so far, Julia? No, um, no. Oh, someone asked what kind of fish you can catch with this, but I think you already addressed that. You said permit. Uh, no, no. Uh, well, oh. you could catch permit, I guess. I've never uh, or trout, stripers. trout, bass, oh, okay. panfish. Oh, okay. Uh, carp would probably eat this fly. Okay. Pretty well. Oh, you were talking about the fly next week that you said. Next week, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Right. So, you know, it's mainly it's mainly a trout fly, but it'll work. It, it, this would be a deadly smallmouth bass fly, uh, largemouth, it's eat leeches, uh, you know, crappie, bluegills, yellow perch, uh, carp. Probably you could catch striped bass on it. A little small for striped bass, but you never know. The hook's a little small for striped bass. You might want to tie it a little bit bigger for them. And uh, um, and a couple of people just tuned in asking about flash and and what kind of pin you used. Um, but other than that, we haven't had any questions. Okay, it's a plain old pin. It's a plain old. I don't know pins. It's a dressmaker pin. You know, it's just oh, just just a just a plain old pin that you buy in the in the uh, hardware store in the in the. Uh, discount store or whatever, just a pin. All you need is a piece of metal with, with a, um, with a, uh, an end on it. But yeah, any pin you got laying around will probably work. I guess they call them dressmakers pins. Okay. So, um, we like, we like fuzzy bodies on leeches. It helps kind of give them action. It makes it stream. So um, what I'm going to use is uh, ice dub because it's flashy. It has a little flash. It adds a little flash to the fly, and it also uh, is kind of coarse. Uh, and we want kind of coarse, some coarse dubbing for this fly because you want the whole body to kind of stream back and blend into the tail so i like i like ice dub but any kind of any kind of dubbing that's kind of coarse like this will work and you can see that has a little bit of a flash to it i think you can see that there so we're going to use that so um it probably you can just dub this on regular but it probably helps to make a dubbing loop so i'm going to make a dubbing loop and you won't be able to see all of this, but I'm going to form a loop. Go around the base of the loop. And now I've got a, a loop of thread. And I'll bring my, bring my uh, th uh, thread all the way up to behind the bead because you're going to finish off way up there. And then you're just going to place some of this dubbing. Don't make it too heavy. 
in the loop. And I'm not even using wax here. You could use wax, but this stuff will kind of stay there. Let's see if I got enough. I think I got enough. I'm going to close that loop. I should have put wax there probably. And I'm going to put my dubbing spinner in the bottom of the loop. You can't see this. And make sure that make sure that that dubbing is kind of in between those two threads. You can move it around and spin it so that it starts to twirl. And don't don't uh, don't spin it too tight. You don't want this terribly tight. You want it about like that. And you can pull a little bit off if you want. And then you're just going to wind this loosely spun dubbing loop, starting right at the tail. That's probably thicker than I want it. But that's okay. And then at the end, you're going to go past the eye and up against the bead. And then tie that down. So as you can see, now you've got the eye of your hook kind of sticking out of the body as opposed to at the front of it. And that'll give you that balanced, balanced uh, position in the water. With finish, put a drop of head cement or super glue on there, and then take a take a dubbing needle or a toothbrush. I like this uh, finger brush deal. And just brush that dubbing back so it kind of all streams back into the tail so it all it's kind of one continuous wiggly piece and that is your balanced leech so not hard not hard at all and it's a different, you know, it's it's a it's a different kind of profile and a different action in the water than you'd get with a standard streamer. And I wouldn't be, you know, maybe want to pull some of this loose stuff off after you brush it. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, hesitate to tie with a loop knot and strip it, strip it like a regular streamer, because it is going to behave a little bit differently when you stop stripping. It's going to kind of hover in the water it's not going to bob and weave like uh, other kinds of stream other kinds of weighted streamers so that is a balanced leech tie them in lots of colors any color you want easy to do quick and um you know it's an interesting pattern something new something different and that's it questions How is it different, says Alex. Alex, it, it's different because it's balanced. It doesn't, for a normal weighted streamer, it's going to, it's going to, when you, when you stop stripping, it's going to dive head down. And then when you pull, it's going to come head up. It's going to, so it's going to go like this through the water. This fly, when you stop stripping, it's just going to hang. It's just going to hang horizontal. It's not going to do this tipping kind of action. So it's a whole different, whole different presentation. And sometimes, uh, sometimes that might be effective. Sometimes the other way, where it, like with a Clouser minnow, where it where it does this kind of thing, uh, bobs up and down. Sometimes that's very effective. Uh, but um, you know, you never know what fish are going to 
you never know what fish are going to, what's going to appeal to the fish. And so this is uh, just a, another option for when you're fishing streamers. Does it ride hook up? Yes, it will ride hook up. It will ride hook up in the water because of the jig hook. Mm -hmm. And I would I would uh, highly advise a loop knot when you tie this on so that so that it does it does retain that attitude in the water and it'll it'll allow it to move. And just you know, if you're wondering how it behaves, just again, like we balance it, tie a piece of tip, put a piece of tip material through the eye, and and hold it, hold it up, and see, see what the attitude is in the water. Any other question? No questions. This is a pretty easy one. Great under an indicator at ice off. Yeah, yeah. This is um. This is really this this can be really deadly fished under an indicator and and not moved much just you know let the let the wave action or let the, the ripples in the current uh, because the indicator will bob up and down and that will make the fly uh, move very subtly so unless you have a really still calm day if you have any wave action at all uh, you don't need to do much just just watch your bobber and when it goes under just like fishing worms for sunfish set the hook. It goes under or twitches or the the indicator behaves in a way that doesn't look like it did a couple seconds ago. You know, if it just moves off to the side or starts to dip a little bit, set the hook. Can you use all marabou tied in like soft tail? Yeah, Phil, I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. This is just one way of... Uh, of tying a, a balanced fly and Warren, yes, you could add legs, rubber legs to it if you wanted to. Absolutely, this is the this is kind of the simple basic. Uh, Herb, I tied this on a size 12 jig hook. You could tie it uh, much larger jig hooks for bass or even trout. Um, you know, in generally in still water, they use uh, still water trout. They use fairly small leeches, not really big, not really big leeches. Strip set, no. In this case, good good question, JJ. You don't want a strip set with a bobber because you're going to just yank that bobber through the water and it's going to make a big burble in the water and you're not going to be able to get a good hook set. So in this case, unlike other streamers, when you set the hook, you want to raise the rod tip for this. Yeah, good, good point. You don't want to. Do you believe in scent on your baits or lures? Add a little power juice on the lures. Elaine, I don't disbelieve it. I don't do it, um, but I, I'm, I'm not I'm not against it. I'd, I'd like to experiment. I've experimented a little bit with it, and I'd like to do a little bit more, but I don't have anything against it. I think it's worth a try. Does Orvis make a 2X long jig hook? Not at the present time, Phil. This is, I tied this on a standard jig hook. And yes, Ken, you could tie it on a size 14 jig hook. Absolutely. A little bit smaller bead, maybe. Yeah, you could tie it on a 14. Probably tie this on a 16 with a small bead. I mean, some leeches are pretty small. And so uh, you could you could go smaller on this, definitely. It's easy fly to tie, so not a problem tying this on a 16. Not a problem at all. What was the bead? Oh, the bead was a black tungsten bead, Mark. You know, I'm, you can use any bead you want, but I like tungsten because you get more weight per diameter on tungsten. So it's a black tungsten bead. You don't need a slotted bead. In this case, just a standard round bead will work. Uh, let's see. Any other? I, don't, I think, Julia, I think I got all the questions. Uh, Ralph, I did mention it before, but I tie this in uh, black, tan, brown, and yellow, kind of a yellowish, orangey, you know, that that kind of brown trout color that brown trout <laughs> seem to like, kind of the golden, golden yellow. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't, I would try all kinds of colors. You know, they're easy enough to tie. The materials are easy to get that, that you could, you could tie these in every color of the rainbow and maybe mix some colors or maybe put some uh, mottled grizzly marabou on there. 
maybe mix the dubbing colors. You could really experiment with this. Um, it's fairly new. It's a fairly new concept, this balanced leach thing. Um, fish this along bottom or midwater. Jeff, I would fish it where the fish are. And you're going to have to find out where they are. I don't know. It's going to depend. And you're going to have to experiment. Every day you go out, you're going to have to decide. Uh, you're going to have to decide uh, whether you fish it, what depth you fish it at. Generally, in still water, they like to fish it a foot or two off the bottom. Uh, Warren says Phil Rowley has a few YouTube videos on fishing the balanced leech. So, yeah, look uh, look at uh, Phil Rowley's channel on YouTube. And I believe in the Orvis Learning Center uh, and in the still water, uh, this fishing for still water trout section of the Orvis Learning Center, uh, Phil uh, talks about fishing a balanced leech there as well. Phil is really, really technical with the way he rigs his, his leaders and his indicators, and it's, it's a whole different world. If you're serious about still water fishing, um, it's a whole different world, and uh, there's lots of, lots of new things to learn, I believe, from that. Ed ties them on a fire hole, number eight, three X heavy, and fulling mill, number eight, two X long for trout. Great. Good idea. Good hooks. All right. What is your preferred indicator? For this, Chris, uh, because it's a heavier fly, I, I like yarn a lot, but I wouldn't use yarn. I My preferred is a airlock. The new foam airlocks, I think, are great. So I, um, I'll, I use that one. But you get any indicator that will suspend. You want you do want an indicator that'll suspend the fly. You want it to be big enough, buoyant enough, so that it actually suspends the fly, so that the fly hangs directly below the indicator. So you may may have to fish a little bit bigger indicator than you than you normally would. Okay, Julia, you got anything else? I think. No, that was a fast one. Well, it's an easy fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an easy fly. All right, everyone. Well, uh, God, it's only 3.30. Huh. Well, I can answer a few other questions if somebody <laughs> has a general question. Since we, I have a meeting at 4, but I don't have anything till then. So if anybody has any, um, any other questions, I'm happy to... Happy to answer them while I'm here or not. Looks like everybody's bailing on us, Julia. <laughs> All it's right. Efficient. Huh? You're efficient. Well, it's an easy fly. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a quick, easy fly. Uh, Tim and I, Roger, Tim and I are tying uh, the uh, Merkin, Merkin uh, crab, Merkin crab um, next Monday. At 3.30. Tim doesn't know that yet. Stan, no, the pins are not plastic. They're metal. Just plain old metal pins. Are you going to have any guests in the future besides Tim? Yeah, we might. We might. I'm going to leave that as a surprise. <laughs> I, I want to have, at some point, I want to have a three-way tie-off with Tim and myself and Cheech. From fly fish food, we gotta we gotta get that set up. But at some point, we'll have a we'll have a three way tie up. How do you rig a, a yarn indicator? Uh, there's two ways, JJ, of uh, yarn indicator. One is to use the New Zealand strike indicator, which you thread it through a tube, thread your leader through a tube, and you pull up on it. And the other way. That, that I like to use is an uh, indicator called the Dorsey indicator. It's developed by Pat Dorsey from Colorado. And um, it, it is, uh, there, are, there are instructions for making both of those indicators on the Orvis Learning Center. It's in the uh, indicator and dry dropper chapter. And there's an article on how to make a Dorsey indicator and also how to use the New Zealand strike indicator. Those are both yarn indicators. So um, um, 
you can be you know, best best for you to go in the learning center and take a look and see how they're done. Roger Bird, I have caught a clam on a fly before. I don't think it ate my fly, but uh, I have I have caught a clam on a fly. Is there a site to send you questions when not presenting? Ralph, the best place to send questions is to the podcast, um, the podcast question uh, uh, mailbox, which is podcast at orvis.com. I read all those questions. I don't answer them all, um, but that's probably the best place. Tell us about the new nine and a half foot five weight stealth rod. Ah, I love that rod. I, I fished it all. I fished all last season. I started out. I started out fishing it in last April, March or April, and it was my go-to rod. Uh, Vermont, New York, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Um, I just used it all season. I just loved it. So I don't know what else I can tell you about it. Um, the little bit extra length gives you um, the ability to roll cast a little bit better. It gives you ability to mend a little bit better. I didn't notice that it was... I didn't notice it as being longer than the nine footer. I just noticed that I had a little extra reach. Um, it's a slightly different taper than the standard 905 uh, Helios. And uh, yeah, I, I, I loved it. I love it. It's my, it's my go-to rod for, for trout fishing. Jim, the pin is for uh, extending the body so that the fly rides balanced in the water. I think if you go back once once we're done here, you can go back and watch the um, watch the rerun on YouTube or on the Orvis Facebook page, and you'd be able to see how how it's balanced. Tommy, my fishing trip was good; it was very good, very successful. We were shooting a lot of video, and we got most of what we wanted. So, Mo tip: What color? get attached to the line. I assume the white goes to the line. You know what, Jeff? Um, I am not that familiar with the Mo tips. It's not a product that Orvis sells. So I, uh, I would, I'm not sure. I would recommend that you go, uh, go to the dealer where you got it and, and ask them, uh, or you can probably look online. I'm sure there's some instructions on, but I, I honestly don't know exactly because I don't, um, I've, I used one once before, but I don't know that much about them. So I apologize that I can't help you there. DIY yarn indicators with dental rubber bands and polyfibers work well. Yeah, Mike, that's the Dorsey indicator that I was talking about. And um, use uh, macrame, macrame uh, yarn and uh, these little rubber bands that they make for uh, braces or something, little tiny rubber bands. And it's a great, it's a really great system. Really, really great system. Ask the wife or partner who sell for more information on pins for this fly. Well, it's just a dressmaker's pin. I think if you just go to the store and ask for some pins, you're going to get the right pin. <laughs> There's not, not anything special. Not a needle, a pin with a head on it. My buddy caught a bat on a fly. Yeah, we've all been there, Alan. Not something you want to do very often. Will Phil Monahan bring back the weekly quizzes? I didn't realize he wasn't doing them, Roger. I don't know, Phil. Philip. Philip, I know you're listening, Philip. Well, Tom. Oops. No, Roger <laughs> wants to know. Well, Roger. Um... After doing them for about 10 years, I ran out of questions. And also, uh, it's a lot of work, and a lot of people weren't taking it. So I sort of listened to the audience. Uh, maybe it's time to bring it back, but we've, we've taken a little break for those reasons. Maybe do it once a month or something. Maybe. It's still hard. I mean, 10 questions every week for 10 years, that's a lot of questions. Yeah. I, I know I did it at first and then I turned it over to you and I was yeah. delighted that I turned it over to you. <laughs> there, it, it is hard. They are hard. David, uh, we caught fish on my trip 
and yeah, you'll see it in future videos. Ralph, uh, the quiz we're talking about is the quiz on the Orvis blog. Phil had a weekly. What what, what did you call it? The what did you call it, Phil? What are you talking about? What did you call the quiz? I forgot. It had a it had a name. Uh, it was the Phil Monahan Fly Fishing Trivia Challenge. First, it was the Tom Rosenbauer Fly Fishing Trivia Challenge. Then it was the Phil Monahan Fly Fishing Trivia Challenge. Then recently, it was the uh, Evan Jones Fly Fishing Trivia Challenge. As my uh -huh. assistant editor took it over. Uh -huh. We'll bring it back, Roger. Just for you. Yeah, Roger. We we want to we want to keep you happy, so we'll bring it back. Uh, Alan Toe Yarn. I think so. I think that's the same as tow yarn. Any yarn that'll float well when you put some um, when you put some uh, silicone paste on it will work fine. Wool, plain old wool works quite well. And of course, it's biodegradable and it's not a plastic. Uh, macrame yarn, polypropylene yarn. Uh, you want to fuzz it out with a comb. You want to make sure that you that you fuzz it out so that it holds air bubbles. And yeah. I notice you have your reel set for right hand and also cast with your right hand. Yes, John, I do. I switch hands when I play a fish. Um, I've always done it that way. It's the way I started out as a kid. Uh, it's weird, uh, but I, I don't, I don't even notice doing it. You know, and uh, I'm very strongly right-handed, and so. I have trouble reeling really fast with my left hand, and I can do it a lot faster with my right hand, particularly in salt water, where sometimes you have to reel really fast. So, um, yeah, I switch hands, but um, there's no right or wrong way. Uh, you set up your reel for whatever side you feel comfortable reeling on. There's no advantage, disadvantage, really. Um, it's, it's whatever you feel comfortable doing. But you do want to decide beforehand because... If you change your mind, you got to take all the line off the reel, switch the drag, and then put all the line back on the reel. So pick a lane and stick with it. <laughs> I love fishing with left-handers because they, well, if I have to use their reel, they always have them set up the way I want them. So most people, most people cast right hand and reel left-handed, which makes a lot of sense because you don't have to switch hands. Personally, I don't mind switching hands when I play a fish, but um, yeah, it's just just another way of doing it. And actually, we made a video about that, but it's not ready yet. But I just told you, I just told you the whole deal. That's all there is to it. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for your great questions, and thank you for coming. Coming. I hope some of you tied along, and and if uh, any of you are new here, welcome to. Fly Tying Mondays, we, we have a lot of fun here. Don't be afraid to tease me if you feel like it. Uh, I can take it. And, um, you know, ask all the questions you want. That's why we do these live, so that you can, so that you can ask questions, uh, burning questions in the moment uh, as, as we're doing it. So um, thank you, everyone. And uh, I will see you next Monday at 3.30. We're going to be tying the merkin so the per uh, the uh, merkin permit fly which is a fly that that you can use for lots of different uh, saltwater fish um breadfish bonefish uh striped bass it's a good it's a good crab it's a great crab imitation so anyway we'll see uh we'll see what kind of tips and tricks flagler has on that pattern i got my method and i'm sure he has his so Thank you, everyone, and um, we'll see you next week.